In the covered market in Merthyr Tydfil's town centre, Lee Heggie runs a small computer repair shop. Lee is a Brexit party supporter. He's also an unlikely celebrity in Merthyr. Are you now one of the most influential people in Merthyr Tydfil? No. That's smiling. I all... Yeah, I am smiling, but that's something I'll always deny. South Wales is the land of Keir Hardy. Merthyr Tydfil was once famous as a cauldron of radical working class rebellion. It's just a fun picture, really. Just to see he's a joker and these lot are all trained up and listening. The latest incarnation of that political tradition is Lee's Facebook group. Generated out of a discontent with the local council, it now has 18,000 followers. Tell them they cannot possibly vote Labour if they believe in Brexit. We'd met Lee the day before at a Brexit party rally in the town. We wanted to find out how an event that had only been announced just a few days before had so many attendees. And how did you hear about this event? I think it was on Facebook. Facebook? Yeah. Um, it was through social media. How did you hear about this? Um, via social media. We've been watching the uh, live Facebook um, uh, rallies that he's been doing. It wasn't exactly hard to find out how this message had spread. But how had a party that barely had a following just a couple of months ago spread that message so fast? The answer to that, in part, lies with people like Lee. Five years ago, he set up a Facebook group fed up of trigger-happy parking wardens targeting his customers. If my customer, who's in his 60s, with a stick, needs to park in a lay-by to run up here to give me his computer quick, by booking him, He's penalising my customer and damages, damaging my custom. The group is a third of the size of the adult population of Merthyr and has so much local influence, it's been credited with Labour's loss of a council here. Its anti-establishment theme maps easily with an idea that on Brexit, politicians have ignored the voice of the people. That what was involved was the transfer of the whole of our democratic system to others. During the election, the Brexit party launched this attack ad on Facebook, aimed at disenchanted Labour voters. The whole thing is an absurdity. In Merthyr Tydfil, just like the rest of Wales, the Brexit party comfortably beat Labour. People in the town are so peed off because you get accused of being a racist, you get accused of being, didn't know what you were voted for. Everyone who turned up to vote knew what they were voted for. People were voting to leave the EU. It was as simple as that. What do we want? Brexit! When do we want it? Now! The day before, Lee Heggie had advertised the Brexit Party rally to the group's followers. Awesome Brexit night. Analysis by the organisation 89UP shows that in the seven weeks before polling day, the Brexit Party managed 326,000 Facebook shares, way ahead of any other party. To me, it seems like they're acting like a really successful advertising company. And they've used existing audiences, existing groups on Facebook and channels that have quite a broad audience already to try and sell that message in instead of starting from scratch and trying to build up their own massive audience base. So you might think that the Brexit party has absolutely come from nowhere to dominate over half of all social media conversation um, that there is around the European parliamentary elections. Well, that's just not the case. The Brexit party had very large networks, often previously UKIP groups or hard Brexit groups that have, uh, that have realigned, they've been built over the last year and they've realigned to really back the Brexit party. We looked at one such group with 14,000 members called the Brexit Supporters Group, although it had no connection to the party. In January 2017, it was called Libertarians and Chartists for Trump. Other names since then have included Make Britain Great Again and South West England Free Tommy, a reference to the far-right figure Tommy Robinson. In March this year, it switched to claiming to be a Brexit Supporters Group. The group had gone from alt-right to far-right to the Brexit party. The group has now been closed. The Brexit party told us that they were committed to closing down any group acting without their permission. 
Then we were told by Mrs May, who incidentally is the worst Prime Minister in the entire history of this nation. There was a simplicity to Nigel Farage's message that was carefully crafted. When I spoke to one of the party's European candidates, he was surprisingly candid about the thinking behind that. We could have quite easily created a manifesto if we wanted to. Okay? We've got the skill set, we know what we're about, but it's, it's, we've chosen not to do that. So, you know, why muddy the waters? And it's that simple message, a message of betrayal, that marries well with social media platforms like Facebook. So populism and social media work well together because there is no uh, intermediary. It is a direct channel from voice of the politician straight to the people. What Farage was saying during this European Parliament election campaign was, was populism on steroids. It's not even talking so much about issues now, it's just simply the people have been portrayed by politicians. It's the classic, pure, uh, you know, 100% proof uh, form of, of populism. Oh, thank you ever so much. And that betrayal narrative also manifests itself in a rejection of the mainstream media. In Merthyr, time and time again, we were told we weren't welcome. We're just asking You're with who? For the BBC. Worst news company in the world, not interested. Not interested? Not interested. And why is that, sir? You are I ask? Marxist, you're EU funded, you're, you're so biased. All you're doing is trying to get people's backs up, right? BBC bias company, that's what you are. You know exactly what you are. Horrible people. That social media can actually change someone's political views well, that's a controversial claim. Our country has been humiliated by politicians. But by utilising Facebook and other platforms, the Brexit party established itself as the vehicle for frustrated Brexiters. You only have to look at Change UK on the other side to see that that isn't necessarily an easy thing to do. Please welcome to the stage, Nigel Farage. The rally in Merthyr had around 500 people in attendance, but it's been watched online by 100,000 people. And through social media, the party has been able to organise rallies that generate more social media buzz that drives people to support them online. Hello, Merthyr! They claim now to have over 100,000 supporters, generating over two and a half million pounds of revenue. So, did Lee Heggie influence others? I can't say if I only influenced two people to turn up, whether I influenced 150 of the 300 plus that turned up. That's the thing with social media, I can't give a figure of how many it actually influenced. It's just one of them things that's basically impossible. It's been long established that social media is a useful tool in political campaigning, but to a party starting out, it's absolutely essential.